Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm here with Ronan Peretz of Cadence. We're going to talk today about data routing in heterogeneous chip designs. Ronan, we've got a lot of data that's coming into these designs these days. We've got a lot of heterogeneous compute elements that are coming in here. What are some of the big challenges that you're facing? Simply put, it's all about moving data. We have dozens of initiatives, dozens of targets, lots of data moving concurrently. And so this means that we need a fabric that can deliver that much data and deliver it efficiently with low power and not consume too much area, obviously, and provide the performance that the system or the application requires in terms of bandwidth, latency, and things like that. Now, to make things even worse, in some cases, obviously, you want to have a design that is kind of, let's say you have a tile and you want to replicate it, put it in a mesh organization. Now the traffic needs to go from one tile to another, and then from that tile to another one, all the way until it reaches the right tile where the data needs to be consumed. That means that the routing becomes even more difficult to do. So what happens when we go into chiplets? We don't necessarily know how all these pieces are going to behave and behave together, right? Exactly. So when you have an SOC or a die, it's fixed. You know what's there. When you go into a chiplet design, now you may build a system that has a matrix of two by two, a matrix of four by four. Sometimes it's a matrix of multiple chiplets that do vision or image processing. Some of them do audio processing. And every application requires a different mix of those chiplets. Now, that means that the routing is different for every system that you're building. So you need a NOC that is capable of handling that kind of change. So it just means that you need to be able to change the routing through the NOC and build your chiplet-based system using the same components that you always used for other systems. Let's take a closer look. Sure. Ronan, what are we looking at? This is the evolution of Cadence System Solutions Group. We started as a simple IP provider. We provided best-in-class processor IP, the Tensilica extensible controllers. We provide a lot of uh, DSPs targeted at different uh, applications. We have AI engines, and we also have interface IP. That would be controllers for memory controller, the high-speed service, and we also have FIS. On top of that, we know that we have to provide all the software tools, software libraries, and support. We then added more system IPs, and this is where the NOC falls into. The NOC is part of the system IP that we provide. We provide reference designs, uh, and we provide benchmarking and things like that that would help our customers make decisions and use our IP. On top of that, we uh, also provide optimized EDA flows and everything that you need in order to create the kind of disaggregated system solution that uses chiplets. So from just being an IP provider, we are turning into more of a design partner. One of the changes that's going on here is that instead of just putting in IP the way it used to be, which is now going into sort of hardened IP with chiplets, you're integrating more pieces together, right? Oh, many more. Now we have clusters of, let's say, uh, audio DSPs. We have clusters of controllers or uh, CPUs. And all of those things need to be able to talk to each other, need to see, to have consistent worldview in terms of address space, and need to be able to deliver messages from one endpoint to another. This makes life much harder than it used to be when you only had multi-layered bus or sometimes just a crossbar. But when you go into a package, you don't necessarily want to be putting all those pieces together. You want to basically have that pre-done outside, right? That's really what you're trying to do here. So one option is, let's say, if you have already a design of a vision chiplet, something that does whatever you need it to do 
when it comes to vision, that's one element of your system. Maybe you have another chip that does audio. Now you can start mix them or add or remove some and create some new chips or new systems. Some of them have more of the vision processing capabilities. Some of them have more of the audio one. And that way you can create multiple systems, each one with a different capability. It's basically, we're back to playing Legos at this point. And when you think about this, this is really follow the data, but there's not just one data stream. There's lots of data streams going on here, right? Yes. And if you look at any typical knock, you will see that there are multiple links between each routing node. We can discuss it later, but between each routing node, there might be multiple links going to other routing nodes. And so data can go concurrently between multiple endpoints to other multiple endpoints. There's no limit on what you can do there. Let's take a closer look into how the data actually moves here, if that's okay. Sure. So let's look at the typical SOC. Usually what you would do is cluster the different functionality. So you would have a vision cluster. You will have an application processor cluster. Definitely security enclave. This is something that you really want to separate from the rest of the system and you will have a high-speed IO cluster. Now, you can see here that every endpoint is only connected to a routing node. It's not connected to any other one, to any other endpoint. However, if you follow the links, you can see that any endpoint can still talk to any other endpoint within that SOC. It just has to go through multiple routing nodes. So, in that case, yes, there might be some additional latency, but you can see that the routing problem becomes much more manageable than it would have been if you used, let's say, crossbar or if you used multi-layered bars. This gets a lot more complicated as we get into 3D ICs too, right? Or 3.5D, which is really what, where a lot of this is going, because now your data is not just going in a planar direction, it's also going up and down. Yes, but... That is something that the NOC should be able to handle quite easily just because you tell it, okay, if there is a message going to a specific target, then you need to route that message that way. You And you can sometimes give it multiple ways to route the message. For example, when you have internet communication, routers will route the same message for different paths just based on possible issues with the network. It doesn't happen that often with an SOC knock, but it is quite possible. For example, we do see some requirement for the knock to overcome, let's say, some defects on the chip. So you want to be able to route data instead of going to an area of the chip, let's say a tile that is defective, you can route around it. And so you can still manage to salvage the die and use it even though it might be a little bit less performant, but you can still salvage that die. So we do see a requirement for something like that, and a NOC can do those things. With a NOC, when it's designed, you assume that this is going to work and the data is going to flow, but it's going to be a little bit different, quite a bit different when you get into things like automotive or even AI in a data center, right? Because you're going to be using those devices a lot harder than you would for, say, standard computing that was done there before. How does that change what happens in the knock? So when you use the knock, you know that you're not going to tax it in terms of the conditions it's going to see in real world. And you know that if there is a problem, it will be detected quite immediately by the additional hardware and by the test software that you run every now and then in order to verify that it is uh, functioning correctly. Does it matter on the thickness of the wires and or whether it's co-packaged optics, for example, or is it still all work together because really what you're focused on is the data movement? We focus on the data movement. We focus on the digital part. And then we bring that information all the way to the edge where you may have a file, you may have an optical link. That's not something that is of concern to the NOC. The NOC simply moves the data to that edge and that physical connection is something that we do have as cadence, we do have solutions for that, but that's not part of the knock. 
How do you know that the data that you're sending from one side of this system to the other is going to be intact by the time it gets to the endpoint there? So this is something that has to do a lot with the architecture of the NOC and a lot of uh, system design. It is something that the application designers have to guarantee. We provide them with the tools that give them information about what is the bandwidth that goes between two endpoints, what kind of bandwidth they can expect, what kind of latencies, the minimum latencies, the maximum latencies, or the average latencies. We can provide them a lot of data about those things, and they can design their system based on that data. So given all that, this is still a fairly complicated system. Where do engineers typically go wrong? Ah, there's so many opportunities to go wrong here. You can over-engineer some of the buses. Maybe you don't need that kind of bandwidth, but that's kind of a good problem. Or you may under-engineer something, and then you will have some bandwidth issues. You may introduce too many routes, uh, routing nodes between one endpoint to another, and that would increase your latency. So now uh, the data will not reach its destination in a reasonable amount of time. So this is something that you will need to resolve. There is the opportunity to make a mistake when you do the clustering. So maybe you want you have two endpoints that talk to each other quite heavily and you put them on two different clusters. That's not going to be good because they're going to see more latency and lower bandwidth between them. So you want to put them in the same cluster. As you see here, the security enclave on a large die could be remote from other endpoints or from other clusters, and that would affect your speed. That can easily be solved by adding some pipelining. There are many options to make mistakes here. Also, the software can be uh, the one that causes those issues. If the software is, is designed in a way that it causes peaks in terms of traffic, uh, there's peaks and uh, lows in terms of traffic, all of a sudden, lots of data is uh, coming into the NOC and it overwhelms it. And obviously, there will be some effect on the bandwidth and the latency. So the software design also needs to come into play when you do this. There's obviously a lot to worry about here, a lot of different moving pieces. What happens on the design side? How does that change from what people were doing in the past to where they're going now? Sure. Let's look at the design flow when you use the NOC. The bottom part of this diagram is a condensed design flow of a plain SOC. So you have the synthesis, auto place run, time enclosure, all those things. The upper part of it is where the NOC comes into play. So as a good designer, you start with an SOC specification on the top left. Now, even at that point, sometimes you may have some idea about your floor plan and it's not really important at this point, but you may have some idea. Uh, you take that specification and you derive your NOC specification. That would be the bandwidth requirements between uh, two endpoints, the latency, what kind of clusterization you want to do, quality of service between two endpoints, quality of service uh, between two endpoints related to specific data type that would be video or audio, things like that. And all that goes into your NOC design. So you need to design the NOC topology, and then you need to assign address spaces to each one of those elements on your NOC. Once you do that design, you send it over to Cadence servers, and we generate several things for you. We generate the RTL. That's the one that's showing here. That's the most important one. But we also generate a synthesis script, timing constraints. We generate a functional system C model. And we also generate a test bench, which leverage the Cadence uh, VIP. And it allows you to start testing the NOC. It allows you to test it both on the functional side, whether the NOC is functioning correctly. And if you add some constraints and traffic models by programming the verification IP that we provide you, then you can start simulating for performance. So you did some simulation or emulation. You can use our Helium, Proteum, Palladium. We have a wide array of tools to use for that. You get some results, but you don't really know exactly what those means right now. That's when you can use our system performance analysis tool, the SPA here. And that tool allows you to 
go and get deep insights into what the knock is doing, if there are any issues and what causes those issues. And once you analyze it, you can go and say, okay, I made a mistake here. Let's correct it. You go back, you change your knock design, you do your simulations again, you do multiple iterations probably at that point until you get to the point where you're happy with your knock performance. And then you can move on to the rest of the chip design. Ronan, there's a lot of issues going on here. This is getting more and more complicated. It's always been about moving data through the chip, basically moving electrons through the chip. But now there are more ways that it can, it can get hung up, right? In terms of the signal did not go through exactly as we wanted to. This becomes a much harder challenge to put into a design, and it's only going to get worse as we go forward, isn't it? Yes. A knock design is not a simple thing. Once you introduce things like virtual channels, once you introduce coherency, possibly, whether it be IO coherency or cache coherency, you are facing a lot of challenges that could lead to deadlocks in the system and starvation uh, just because of quality of service uh, paradigm that you're using. All of those things can significantly impact the performance or even simply kill your design. So what we do here at Cadence is when we designed the NOC, we took the NOC generator and we used multiple configurations every night. We generated multiple configurations every night. And then we bombarded those configurations with traffic, random traffic, and sometimes some directed uh, traffic just to try to catch it on those uh, little corners of the design. And we do that constantly all the time in order to catch issues. And our VAP is capable of handling coherent traffic and able of driving coherent traffic into the NOC. And so whenever we do those things, we run so many simulations that we feel comfortable that the NOC is going to be functional and it is going to deliver the messages as it should be. The only thing is the performance is a function of the actual design of the SOC. So Ronan, there's going to be a, a lot of work for engineers for a very long time here. It doesn't sound like we're ever going to run out of problems to solve. And this is all very interesting stuff. Yes, of course. We're here just to make sure that engineers have job security forever. <laughs> Ronan Parrott, thanks for a great explanation. Thank you so much, Ed.